My message this morning is golf ball theology. Golf ball theology, say it. This morning we had a spider hanging down up off there trying to steal the glory of God, but we got him. Come to find out our drummer ran out like a chicken right out of this service. Our worship and drummer ran out. I, am, I just don't even know what to think. Psalms 19 verse 1 says this. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his. When you look up, it's God showing off. When you look up, no matter where you are, when you see, it's God showing off. It's God showing how great, how powerful he is. The next passage, just quickly, it says this in Psalms 148, 1 for 4. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord from the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Just stop there a minute. The angels were met for the glory of God and praise God. <coughs> the angels praise. Watch this, verse 3. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. The stars praise God. Whether you know it or not, the stars praise God. The heavens declaring the glory of God. There are dolphins singing to the glory of God this morning. The whales are singing to the glory of God. All creation sings to the glory of the great creator. The Bible says even creation groans because man has put it in sin and looks for its redemption to when things are perfected. Verse 4 says, Praise him, you heavens of heavens, and waters above the heavens. The Bible goes on to say, let everything that has breath, everything he created, praise the Lord. Nehemiah 9, 6 says, you alone are Lord, you have made heaven, heaven of heavens and all their host. That's the angels. The word host is a military term. It means when they muster to show power. The angels with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it, the sea that's all in them, and you preserve them all, the host of heaven who worships you. In Isaiah 40, and he calls the angels by name. And in the morning, he calls them to muster. It says, he calls them to host. When you're in the military, I was on a military ship, and every morning, no matter what day it was, no matter if you were out at sea or in, everybody had to come. They call it a muster. And you line up in a certain place and you stand. That's where they count to make sure you're there, that somebody didn't throw you off board, that you didn't jump off board, that somebody didn't stuff you in a suitcase, that somebody didn't harm you. They needed to know that you were there. And you better be there on that morning. It doesn't matter hell or high water. If you're in the military and they call muster, you better be there. No matter what, you had better be there. Do you know that God says he calls the angels to host? That means every morning they in their spot, in their perfect row. He calls them by name. They stand and give him praise and glory. Not one of them is missing, it says. Not one of them falls short. Every morning, there they are. From when the beginning that he created, they're still there. Everyone in their spot, everyone giving him glory and honor. I want to talk about this glorious God. I have to use a golf ball. That's why you have a golf ball. Show me your golf ball. Find your place on the golf ball. Look at it. Find your place on there. It's really not too hard to find. You're not where the oceans are. We're in the middle of a cornfield. So look on there and find yourself on this glorious earth. If you'll show me the picture of the earth, Jonathan, please. The earth is a beautiful, is a beautiful planet. This is where we live. The earth is a planet, but the earth has something that keeps us alive. It's called a sun. The sun is a star. Are you with me? Do you know that it's only one of billions of stars? Listen, we live in a neighborhood, and it's called the galaxy, the Milky Way. But there are multiple Milky Ways. And there are multiple planets, and there are billions, listen, billions, say it, billions of stars. Billions of stars. But as big as the earth is, we're really just a little drop in the bucket. Because actually, and I, I gave a wrong number in the first, but I'll just refer to this number. The earth is around 109 times, or the sun is about 109 times bigger than the earth. Are you with me? Here's the, here, here's the sun. Now listen. It's a raging planet, 
field full light. You talk about fire and golfing and, you know, they're so amazing. And God put us exactly in the right place. That while we move around it, if we got any closer, we'd burn to death. If we got any further away, we would freeze to death. But it's moving around. If I were to say the earth is a golf ball, Pastor Jeremy is going to show us how big the earth is compared. That is the size of the earth compared to the sun. The earth compared to the sun. The sun is such an amazing place. You could actually put one or 960,000 earths inside of the sun. It would be like filling a school bus full of golf balls. Filling a school bus full of golf balls. If the golf ball was the earth, you could fill a school bus. That's how many it would take to fill the sun. That's a big God. Come on, you bunch of dead people in here this morning. That is a big God. Act like I'm grown up in a Presbyterian church. Oh, what happened to you? It's going to change your prayer life. I mean, that wasn't even a drop in the bucket to God. You know that there's so many, and I just want to visit a few planets. There's one planet they call Beetle Geese, but I call him Beetlejuice. Say what you want. I'm just saying my own words. Beetlejuice. You can find him every night if you look. He's one of those bright, bright stars. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. He's around 427 years. No, listen to this. Light years away. Are you with me? 427 light years away. So basically... At multiply 427 by 5.88 trillion miles. That's how far Beetlejuice is away. This is a big God. This is a big God. If we actually wanted to say the earth is a golf ball, we could fly to New York, get on our plane, get, and we go to New York City, and we get in the middle of the city, and there's this great big thing called the Empire State Building. And take your golf ball out of your pocket, put it on the ground right in front of the Empire State Building, and walk back across the street. Now watch when you walk across the street because there's a lot of traffic out here. And, and don't worry about people thinking you're crazy. There's all sorts of crazy people in New York. They'll never even notice you. It's all right. And as you look at the golf ball, just imagine that at the, at the foot of the Empire State Building. And look at the top of the Empire State Building. We're, we're imagining how big Beetlejuice is. But not one Empire State Building, six. Six. Six Empire State Buildings. How many knows God is a big God? Wow, are you kidding me? Six. I, I mean, how big? I, it's just hard for me to fathom what this thing is. Look at the sun compared to. Now, where are we? Can't even see our little dot. Hello. And remember last week you were complaining? God told him, well, if you would have just done this and he'd have just, uh-oh. Can you do this, God? Can you fix this, God? Hello. It would take 260 trillion Earths to fill Beetlejuice. Trillion. 260 trillion Earths to fill Beetlejuice. So if you want to know really the truth, you could take a golf ball, and we could go to Louisiana. Now we're on our way to New Orleans. And Oh, can, when we get there, we're going to eat some boudin and some crawfish. If you've not ate Cajun food, you've not had good food. But we could fill the Superdome where the Saints play. Look at that, look at that stadium. We could fill the Superdome with golf balls. 
But you'd not only have to fill it once, you'd have to fill it 3,000 times to equal the amount of the size of Beetlejuice. 3,000 times. How many know we serve a big God? Now, there's a bigger planet in the, in the, in the, in the neighborhood. His name's Musifi. Everybody say Musifi. Let's take a look at Musifi. There he is, shining bright up there. Look at that galaxy. Look at the billions of stars. You can't even find, I mean, Musifi. Let's talk about Mr. Musifi. Mr. Musifi, if, it was, if, he was, if, if the earth was a golf ball, fly to San Francisco. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful place, a big place, but you really, it's almost like you're driving like through some rocks and some woods, and all of a sudden, you come across these things, and there is this bridge they call the Golden Gate Bridge. And you just take your golf ball and roll it out there, right? At the first of where the Golden Gate Bridge is. And stand back and look. This is how wide Musifi is, but not one Golden Gate Bridge, two Golden Gate Bridges. It would take to show us the width of Musifi if the earth was a golf ball. How many knows? Look at that thing. To just the width of Musifi. So let's say it this way. May I help you within, within this context? It would take 207 quadrillion earths to fill Musifi. Now, when I said that number, you all just went brain dead. How big is a quadrillion? Well, see, I get stuck. I've never had a million dollars. I don't own a million dollars. I wish I did have a million dollars, just like you, right? But actually, if, if I, can, I can wrap my right head around a million dollars, okay? So if we calculate a million dollars, if you put my numbers up there, so look, you'd have to do this. A thousand million is a billion. Can you calculate that? A thousand billion is a trillion. A thousand twi trillion is a quadrillion. That is a number. Now, remember what I had just got done telling you? 2.7 quadrillion Earths we would take to fill Musifi. This is a big God. This is a big God. The scary thing is, I'm not even going to tell you today the biggest planet. I'm just going to tell you number two because I have facts on him. But his name, Canis Majoris. That sort of sounds like a, a man on the block. <laughs> Canis Majoris. The big man on the block. If the earth was a golf ball, say it. If the earth was a golf ball, we would fly across the world to a place called Mount Everest. And we could stand at the foot of Mount Everest and put our golf ball and stand back. Mount Everest is over six miles high. Over six miles high. That would be where the earth compares to really the second big man on the block. If we were to try to take the golf ball and fill up Canis Majoris, we could do it this way. We could go to Texas, and we could fill the whole state of Texas with golf balls from corner to corner. But not just one layer. It'd have to be 22 inches high. That's how many golf balls it'd take to fill Canis Majoris. How many knows God is a big God? How many knows this is an amazing, 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 amazing God? In Canis Majoris, we couldn't even take a Sharpie marker and place where the earth is up there. And it's just one of millions he's made. One of billions that he's made. This is an amazing God. And I just want to just to stop for a minute for you to realize we've all done this at times. Job had an argument with God. And listen, if you have, it's okay this morning. I'm not, I'm not condemning you. But Job got a little bit mouthy, as we all have. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you? Come on now. 
Why did that happen? Why? If you would have done this, if you would have told me, if you... I mean, I find myself giving God advice all the time. I mean, if you'd have just told Damon last week that I had... Job answered, and finally God said to Job, sit down, my friend, and let me tell you the truth. Let's go to the Job passages, if you will. Read these later on. I don't have time sake to walk through all these, but watch this. God says to Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth, my friend? Tell me if you have understanding. Tell me. You know, that, that's why God's not freaked out about some guy in North Carolina saying God's not real and writing a book about it. He ain't worried about it. Right? Tell me if you have understanding. Verse 5. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? Can you imagine the tape measure God has? I mean, think about how fa- the earth's traveling around the sun, and I mean, it can't, it can't move. I mean, we go in an orbit and out of order, orbit, but it's perfect every single time. It never misses a beat. And then the other planets are there every morning. They're there at night. Guarantee you the stars will still be there. Guarantee you winter's still coming. Summer will be here. There's still God's, do- it still happens. Every winter the trees dry up. Every summer they come to life. The grass goes away. It comes back. God just knows how to make it happen. It's guaranteed. I guarantee you the sun will go down. And tomorrow the sun will come up. He's an amazing God. Verse 6. To what were its foundations fastened? God's like, how you think I did it? Because you realize what God just said. Let it be. Well, how does it stay? How does it? And now we're going to try to argue that God is not real. Or who laid its cornerstone? I better hurry. I'm screwing around, getting myself in trouble. When the morning stars sang together, the stars sing the glory of God. The earth declares the glory. Romans 1 tells us we're all without excuse because the glory of God's been seen by all. And they could tell you that a God didn't create it. Where did it come? Uh, Come on, come on, come on. But let's go on. And the sons of God shouted for joy. It reads on in verse 31, says this. That can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades or loose the belt of thorn? He said, can you handle all the planets? Were you there when I put them in place? The galaxies and the Milky Ways and the other Milky Ways you haven't even seen yet. You don't even know what's there. And how is it they don't hit each other? I know we hear people, oh, yeah, the earth's going to be destroyed. We're going to hit another planet. I haven't seen it happen yet. Still there every morning, right? Still there. God's saying to him, where were you? Verse 33 says this. Can you bring out Mazareth in a season, or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? Who are you? Who do you think you are? I love Job's next comment, for finally Job shuts his mouth, and he responds this way to God. Job answered and said, behold, I'm a piece of poop, Lord. Sorry for my translation. Let's just be real in church. Job's realizing the greatness and the power and the glory of God. How amazing that he is. Just let me tell you about this creator. Let me tell you about this creator. I want you to understand him a little bit. I want you to understand something that that may help you this morning. Paul's writing to the book of Colossae, and he's telling us about the creator. They've gotten a little bit messed up in Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. He says this. He says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Can I tell you who we're talking about here? Jesus. Jesus. Watch this. Verse 15. He is the image of the, when God looks in a mirror, he sees Jesus. He sees Jesus. Jesus. He's the firstborn over all creation. Watch this, verse 16. For by him all things were 
For by who? By Jesus, all things, all things, all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and all things were created for him. He's the beginning and he's the end. He's the goal. He is the purpose of it all. It's Jesus, God in the flesh. It's been revealed to us. Jesus, God in the flesh. Somebody ought to say amen. Verse 17 says, verse 17 says, and he is before all things. Some of you thought he showed up at Christmas. We're in the book of Matthew. He is before all things, and in him all things, and in him all things consist. John writes this, John 1.1. 1, 1. I love this. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You understand the Word, the spoken Word. We spoke it, and it came into being. Watch this. The Word, and the Word was God. And he was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says, all things were made through him. All things were made what? Through him. And without him, nothing that is made is. John 1, 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, we're talking about Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1, quickly for time's sake. One of my favorite passages in the book of Hebrews, he says in 1.1, 1, 1, he says at the last days, God who at various times spoke in, in times past to the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his, by who? By Jesus, the Son. Watch. Whom he has appointed heir of all things. That means he owns it all, baby. It's all his. Saturn, the galaxies, the Milky Way, Canis Majoris. He owns it all. He owns it all. He is the heir. He's the owner of it all. Whom he's appointed heir of all things through whom he also he made the worlds. He made the worlds. Made the worlds. Verse 3. Who is the brightness the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, <laughs> the expressed image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his, it's still happening, it's still moving, it's still going on by the word of his power. Like, can he pay your bill? Can he fix cancer? Hello. Can he deal with your son who's acting like an idiot? Well, I don't know, God. If... Upholding all things by the power he and he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus, we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about Christ, the invisible or the visible image of the invisible God. He's the originator and he is the goal. He was before the beginning. He is the meaning of the creation and he is God in the flesh. He's made everything we're see, we've seen. We're talking about Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who was from the beginning, who is. All glory go to him. Listen to me. And let me just tell you something. The guy who made all this looked at the earth and seen a bunch of little crazy fools running around that were lying to each other and stealing and cheating and killing one another and sleeping with one another and doing the opposite of what he's told him to do and giving him the finger and talking back at him and mocking him and calling him not real. And he knew we were never coming out of it unless somebody was perfect would pay for our sins. <laughs> Hear me close. You can't pay for your sins. I can't pay for your sins. I can't even pay for my own. The list I have is 
and he knew we were stuck, and he loved us so much. He cared for you so much. Look, the God who created Cephas, the God who created Majoris, the God who created the Son, looked down on you, loved you so much. Put the picture up, and he does this. For you and I. Do you realize who that is? That is the God who created the world. That's Him. And those nails are you. He's bleeding for you. He died for you. He paid for you. You know what, of everything God made, the most important thing he made? You know what he loves more than anything? You. It's such a puzzle. It's such a puzzle. Actually, you want to hear a conversation from the angels? In Psalms 8, the angels are looking at the stupidity of humanity. And we catch their conversation. Psalms 8, verse, if you'll put it up for me. When we consider the heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, and all that you've ordained, look what he said, look what they say. What is man that you are mindful of him? You know what the angels are saying? God, why do you love him so much? Why do you care for him so much? God, look what they've done to you. The angels are praising every morning. They're faithful with men. We're too busy for him. We can't give him any time. We make him a promise and we lie, knowing. We stand willfully in his face. And then blame him for the situation we get in. And complain, the angels are going, how is it? Why do you love him so much? Why is it? You are his prized possession. And I'm flabbergasted that he would love me like that. I, I know the thoughts I've had. I know the things I've done. And when I get real, I just have to sit down in front of this big God and say, I'm just flabbergasted that you would come visit this little planet. You know, everything God ever created, he loves so much, he provides for. That's the reason he provided a way for you to get out of your sin or he wouldn't have been God. Listen to this. Do you know that the worms this morning found food? And you know why? Because God made sure they were fed this morning. That's why Jesus said, look at the sparrows. They don't have jobs. And I take care of them. You have little faith. You have little faith. God's intent on loving you and freeing you and grabbing a hold of you and making you who he's called you to be, God's intent in rescuing you, he's not forgotten you, he won't forget you, you are the apple. Do you know, listen to me close, he knows how many hairs are on your head. This Big God knows everything for you and died a brutal death for you. Paul closes with this, and I'm out of time. Oh, I got time, Pastor Damon. Dear Jesus, hallelujah. I'm freaked out. I've done this twice. I've done been through one of those services. Amazed. Paul writes probably the most amazing miracle ever. He calls it the mystery. You've read it. You could, some of you could quote it, but I don't think we really realize how amazing this verse is. From the beginning, when God started all this thing, 
And now all these years later, we are screwing up and failing. But there was a plan from the beginning before Jesus came to earth that he would not only redeem man, he would not only take our sin and allow us to go to court, and the court would say, boom, not guilty. But then he would do something that would change us forever, and this is it. Paul writes this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 26. The mystery which has been hidden from the angels... I mean, hidden from the beginning, from the ages. All the angels wondered, what is man? Why are you doing this? The stars are praising him and we're cursing him. The moon is giving him glory and we're complaining. And the mystery that's been hidden from the ages and from generations has now been revealed to the saints. Verse 27. To them, God willed. Now listen, when God wills something, He's going to do it. No devil in hell. Nothing can stop God. If He wills it, He will do it. To make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, you and I. It's the mystery from beyond ages. What is the mystery? that this God who created the earth and the worlds would now dwell in you. You. Listen to me close. Do you realize what that's saying? That if you will acknowledge Him as God, If you will admit that you're a sinner and you can't fix yourself, if you will humble yourself, listen to me close. I know we do these altar calls, but I don't know what it takes to say. See, some of us know it here, but it's 18 inches below is the, the issue. I don't know what it takes to get in there. For me, it was just watching God heal Kimmy. And I hit my knees. I said, God, help me. You've just shown me you're real. And it happened. Somehow it went, it it just got there. I didn't even have it here. It just got there. And it changed me. If you could, if you would repent and turn to Jesus, and I'm not just saying say yourself. I mean, really repent. Like, like say, I'm not going to go do that anymore. Hell or high water. I'm not, repentance just doesn't mean turning. I mean, it means turning the other way. It means bowing down and saying, I'm done. I'm empty. I can't. If you would really do that, here's what happens. It's called being born again. The Holy Spirit now lives in you. And you can't get better. You can't overcome. I don't care what happened to you. How tough your story is. And I got a tough story too, my friends. But I don't care how tragic your story is. I don't care what you've been through. If you've got God living inside of you, your future's bright. You can be the overcomer. You can be who he's called you to be. If you give, if you lifted your hand and you made a commitment on Easter saying, I want Jesus as Lord. He's now living inside of you. You can do all things through him who strengthens you. There's nothing you can't do. If you went in the waters of baptism last week and the old man died and you were raised up in newness of life, the Holy Spirit now lives inside of you and there's nothing you can't do. There's nobody that can keep you. If he created the stars and the billions of the stars, I guarantee you he can fix your mess. I guarantee you he can pay your bills. I guarantee you he can move your wife or your children, or move something in your way. There's no mountain too big enough for God. There's no problem you face that you can't overcome. You just got to realize who lives inside of you. You got to realize who you are. You got to realize who you are. You got to realize who you are. He lives inside of you. 
That's when you realize this test is just going to be a testimony because he ain't going to fail. If God will, I mean, if he lives inside of you, he's not going to leave your body to decay in the grave. If he lives inside of you, he's not going to let something whip you. He's not going to let something defeat you. He's not going to let somebody overcome you. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If God be for me, who could be against me? Today I close this service with this simple. He's a big God. He is a big God. And I don't get it all. But if he wants to come and live in here, I'm open. I'm open. I bow, Lord, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life, God. I don't know where you're at, but if you're not committed to God, I want to encourage you to do it today. Like I don't, I, your story matters. And I'm sorry what some of you have been through. I'm sorry. But I want you to know, that pain's not bigger than God. And God will redeem, and God will fix, and God will bring a hope in you, and God can heal that pain, and God can heal that anger, and God can heal that despair in you. You just got to let him in. The disappointment that's overwhelming you, you got to let go of it and look to the great appointment of God. Look to the mystery of God inside of you. God inside of you. If you're in your class that you're seizing, you're not in David Blackburn's class, you need to get in. It get better. You need to come on. You need to do whatever you got to do. Fight like hell. But just know this. The one inside of you is going to cause you to overcome. You are not defeated. You are not the tail. There's a reason why said, you're the head, not the tail. What are you doing? It's our season, baby. It's our season for some of you to get better. It's our season to reach the lost. It's our season for God to do something great. Come and let us pray with you if you need prayer this morning. But some of you need to take your golf ball. You need to put it in your car. And the next time you start feeling sorry for yourself or acting like a little idiot. I act like a little idiot too. I'm calling you one. I'm calling myself one. God, you need to realize how big he is. And if he did this... He got you. He's got you. Father, I love you this morning. Amazed at your greatness. I can't even fathom it all, Lord. It's way over me. I'm not that smart, but I know that you are. And if we as humans are the apple of your eye, we just, we're just going to take it. We're, thank you. Thank you. Today, I look up to you and give you glory. Tomorrow morning, I pray you get up like the stars and give him some praise. And I pray you get up like the heavens and give him some praise. Next Sunday, when you walk in here in church, I pray that you quit taking selfies of yourself and looking at yourself in church and put it on Facebook and lift your hands to the highest heaven and give him some praise. Listen to me. Can you imagine the angel saying, well, I don't like the song. I'm not going to sing that one. Father, we give you the glory and we'll give you the praise. Holy Spirit, we release you and your people to flow for revelation knowledge. It comes only from you. That their eyes may be enlightened. They may know what the hope of the glory of the inheritance that's in the saints. We'll give you the praise, give you the glory. Somebody lift your hands and say, praise the Lord. We give you glory this morning, God.